Hello, welcome everybody. I'm C.W. Wade. You can visit my website at sandyhookfacts.com. I thought I would talk about this FEMA document. It's been revived. It's one of the older hoaxes perpetrated by the hoaxers. It's certainly been debunked before by me, Mike Flagg, Maidabunk, Deanna, etc. All credit due to them that goes to them, as I did reference their website as I prepared for this video. And some of the information is theirs, and some of the information is my own. I think there needs to be a comprehensive debunking of this. Like so many other things pushed by the hoaxer leadership, this is nothing more than a fraud. So what I'm going to do is present 10 proofs that each of these proofs on their own prove that this document is a fake and a fraud. Add up those 10 proofs of fraud and you realize that this document is actually not even a decent forgery. Many people are getting tricked by... Uh, you know, a little logo in the middle. But if you dig a little bit deeper than the logo, you start to realize what a fraud this document really is. This document is merely meant to trick the lower than average simple-minded YouTuber by liars and con artists at the top of the Sandy Hook hoax cult, all of whom are fully aware that this document is fatally flawed. All of them use this document to bolster their fundraising and their uh, sales and their web clicks. All of them or just about all of them. So let's get into this. Fraud proof number one. The origin of this document is a private, non-government person. It cannot be authenticated at all by any government agency. Real FEMA documents come from, guess where? FEMA. That's right. It comes from FEMA. They can be authenticated as coming from FEMA. The first presentation of this document is that it was obtained from a private person. Since the document is fake, you will never find it on a government server, nor will you be able to FOIA it. WikiLeaks will never release it. There is no valid source for this document whatsoever. As you see here, Wolfgang Halbig's former attorney, Day Williams, tried to authenticate the document using FOIA requests. Obviously, he cannot authenticate this document. That's because it's not real. The fact the document is fake is self-evident by the document itself, as you will see. Hoaxers began pushing this document on or about October 6, 2014. I do not know of any examples of this document appearing before October 6, 2014. On October 6, 2014, it got the full simultaneous hoaxer blitzkrieg release through Sandy Hook Hoax Group, appearing in some alternative media websites, began to appear by sock accounts on YouTube. Tony, one of the lead disinformation chills, began pushing the document, and it was uh, hosted on his Mediafire account. It also came out on a website titled Do Not Try to Find Me. Fake Socks pushed it. Soon, shills like Fetzer and Tracy were using the document to push their agendas. And the FEMA document was born. It was uh, never questioned by any hoaxer. It was I don't think it was even read, since if it was read, they could see right through it. But it basically spread like wildfire as a meme. While I doubt Tony personally created this item, he gets a lot of the credit because he serves as the primary shill of false hoax information quite often, and he's been caught spreading blatantly false information many times, including with this document. Whether Tony hosted the document first, or after a few minutes he hosted it on his own server, is actually almost a chicken and egg conversation. It doesn't really matter. The only attempt hoaxers offer of authentication is a creation date in the properties, listing the creation date as October 8, 2012, almost two years to the day prior to the magic release date by Tony and the hoax group. It also says it was created at 9.23 p.m. Apparently, they were really burning the midnight oil to get this document out in FEMA back in 2012. Creation date properties are, of course, easily changed with Adobe Acrobat and many other programs, and the creation date is therefore actually meaningless. In fact, the hoaxers were lazy about their creation date change, merely changing two numbers. They left the month, they left the time. They just changed the date, and they just changed the year. As part of the way Tony shields this document, he makes the argument that there is no motive to create this document falsely. Obviously, that is false. The hoaxer leaders are monetary-based organizations, from donations to product sales to clicks and YouTube views. 
Everything they do is about money. That is why they push hoax day and night for every single shooting. They get web clicks for it. They get money for it. As a matter of fact, on the day this document released, Tony's hoax group was running a fundraising drive called Sandy Hook Truth Fund. Money is the prime motive, and this document attempts to fill the void that the hoaxers have. That void is the fact that there is no evidence of hoax. None. They have nothing. They cannot present a single piece of evidence of hoax yet. Hoaxers have been and continue to be desperate to create some real tangible evidence that will support their narrative, and they've been able, unable to do so. All they've been able to do is fabricate a few things, and one of the things they fabricated is this document. The monetary motive for this document is very clear, so to say that there is no motive is completely idiotic. Besides the fact that we are dealing with hoaxers, and hoaxers lie and hoax people constantly into thinking every mass shooting is a hoax, that is what they do. They lie. That is why we call them hoaxers. That is what they're paid to do, by the way. I think the motive for this document is very clear. Fraud proof number two. The document claims to be of a, quote, classified event. The document comes from a template that we will discuss shortly, and that template uses the language unclassified. The hoaxer simply removed the un and changed the language to classified to tingle the tinfoil hats of their viewers. But in doing that, they actually exposed the document for the fraud that it is. Saying something is classified sounds good on TV spy programs and sells to the wide-eyed hoax viewer, but in the real world, the U.S. government has a classification system in place that requires classified documents to be marked with a classification heading designating the actual classification of that document. It's not just classified. The document saying classified is not enough. Hoaxers don't know this, of course, and they never Googled it up. You can Google the government guide to marking documents or other documents that are out there and get an idea of how the classification works. I have an example showing on the screen for this video. The fake, quote, classified FEMA manual has none of the headers expected of an actual classified document. As a matter of fact, on every single page, the hoaxers listed it as a sensitive document. Sensitive, by definition, is not classified. Sensitive is an unclassified designation. Add to that a little common sense. U.S. government classified documents are not just floating around on Tony Meade's Mediafire account. And if they were... He would be in jail with his other friends that have pulled bullcrap regarding Sandy Hook. And he's not doing anything for them, of course. With all the $100,000 they've raised, they've done nothing. We're not going to go there in this video. We could actually end this presentation right here. The document is obviously not a classified document. It has no classification markers. And despite the claim otherwise that it's a document for a classified event, there is nothing authenticating or classifying this document. So actually, we could be done and done right there. Fraud proof number three. No check-in, no safety briefing or discussion, no weapons policy. A knowledgeable police first responder would tell you that a major proof of fraud in this manual is the lack of safety and weapons policy in a purported active shooter drill manual. That simply would never happen. On page 12 of this fraudulent manual, as an afterthought, the hoaxer added, everyone must check in. What this sentence obviously does is tingle the tin hats of the conspiracy theorists and give them their aha moment to go along with their check-in sign that we all know was not present on the morning of 12-14-12, by the way. It is actually opposite. It's not their aha moment. It's proof of fraud. In a real MCI or active shooter drill, everyone absolutely must check in at the beginning. They get briefed. They do not respond, for example, code 3 and just go running into a building with loaded firearms and start pointing their guns around. That is not how they conduct a drill. They responded code 3 to that school and ran it, locked and loaded, firearms at the ready. There was no check-in. There was no briefing. 
Drills are a very controlled environment. Every aspect of a drill is monitored for evaluation and most importantly for safety. When police agencies are involved, the stakes are that much higher to ensure safety because drill personnel are armed. They go through safety and scenario briefings. Often, they do not even use real weapons. They use fake weapons, training weapons, what some people call rubber ducks. Any real weapons that they use are checked and often blocked so they cannot fire. You don't run around drills with loaded weapons, period. They are not allowed to carry ammunition at all. So all of this stuff is fully checked at the safety briefing, and it's part of their weapons policy. All of this would have been addressed in a real manual having to do with an active shooter drill as an entire appendix, as you can see with this manual. Hoaxers could have used this manual. There would be a policy in place, and they could have Googled it up and threw it in the manual. But it wasn't there because whoever wrote this has no clue what they're doing. The fact there is no safety policy or weapons policy proves all by itself that this document cannot be an actual document for an MCI active shooter drill that includes on-site first response personnel for law enforcement. It cannot be. Fraud proof number four. Incorrect agency is listed for the contact person. To push their pre-invented narrative, hoaxers wanted that FEMA drill feel. But in their zeal to do so, they added a major proof of fraud. They wrote the wrong agency as employing the listed contact exercise director. Can you believe that? The only contact person listed is Tom Romano of the Federal Emergency Management Agency. The email listed contains the laughable typo of thomas.romano at ct.gov e. Yes, with an extra e at the end, as you see on the screen. They copied it right from the page, except for, of course, they added the typo. I do not consider the laughable typo an irrefutable proof of fraud on its own. The real problem is Thomas Romano is not a FEMA employee at all. Romano is, as his correct email address indicates, a Connecticut State employee. In fact, an employee of the Connecticut Emergency Management and Homeland Security Department. Obviously, Thomas Romano, Connecticut's regional training director, would not make the error of calling himself a FEMA employee. Here, hoaxers are presenting what's supposed to be an important classified document, and they list the wrong agency for the guy. It's a fatal flaw, all right? It's a proof of fraud. Fraud proof number five. The document is created from a freely available Massachusetts Department of Health template for a call down drill. It actually is not even fashioned after an MCI or active shooter drill manual. They could have got one of those, but they didn't. They wanted to be lazy and use a call down drill from a health agency. A call down drill is a call people drill. Let's read what it is exactly. A call-down drill is a systematic series of telephone calls from one person to another. That's it. It's simply emergency notification. That's why in the document it says, before every communication, you will state this is a drill. Obviously, you never heard that during the Sandy Hook shooting, because it was not a drill. So what this call-down drill actually is, is emergency notification practice. A call-down drill is not an on-site mass casualty drill. So what they did was convert this Massachusetts Health Department call-down drill manual to a FEMA drill manual by adding a FEMA logo, changing some of the wording to include nonsensical language concerning MCI. As a Department of Health Services call-down drill template, the manual includes Centers for Disease Control language. Language the hoaxers were too lazy to even remove. Yet language completely out of place for an on-site active shooter drill. The hoaxers left in the dispensing language, in the dispensary centers. The hoaxers left in the goal as one of the main goals of an alleged MCI drill manual, mass prophylaxis, which literally means protecting the public through preventing the spread of disease through dispensing antibiotic or vaccines. Mass prophylaxis has nothing to do with active shooters, obviously. Come on now. You guys can Google this yourself, all right? You guys can Google up mass prophylaxis and see what it means, all right? Hoaxers could do that. You got professors pushing this manual who know how to do that, all right? They could Google something. 
Fraud proof number six. The document was lazily written by someone who lacked any real knowledge of drills. That's obvious on its face. Whoever wrote this is actually knows nothing. As a matter of fact, the language style to me suggests it was written by the same author as the one who writes HartfordCommunityCourt.com. It has that same type of pretend to be smart, but unfortunately I'm using the wrong big words in the wrong spot type of feel to it. For example, a target capability of the drill is mass death of children at a school by firearms. Really? Mass death of children at a school by firearms is a target of this drill? That is obviously an idiotic method of writing, at a minimum, mass casualty event or active shooter drill. They could have just used normal language that they actually use in these drills, but they can't figure that out. Furthermore, it doesn't represent the realities of addressing triage, MCI command, logistics, and response as the cornerstones of these active shooter and MCI drills. You know why active shooter, MCI, triage, and response language is missing? You guessed it. It's because they accidentally used a call-down manual. You know, call people. A phone call drill for health services. Another dumb thing written by the author is the use of media for evaluation. Does that make any sense at all? It makes no sense at all. They're not going to submit to uh, evaluation by the press. It just doesn't happen in the real world. This is all hoaxer land stuff. Another thing from this barely literate hoaxer, suicide or apprehension of unknown shooter. Again, the language used on its face is nonsensical. Fraud proof number seven. There's no sponsoring agency. While this FEMA guide purports itself to be a drill manual, drills and tabletop exercises are conducted at the local levels by local agencies under the bigger umbrella of FEMA and Homeland Security. FEMA and Homeland Security do not actually put these drills on. All right, they're there, they participate, they uh, provide materials, but the hosting agencies of these are the local agencies that work these programs out, and they're working on their own state response systems. FEMA doesn't move in and take over these state agencies and conduct these drills for them. This document lists no local sponsoring host agency at all. Without a local agency to host this drill, the drill could not happen. Fraud proof number eight, the CDC provides the health drill and evaluation for this manual. Instead of a section discussing safety, active shooter, check-in policy and briefings, this type of thing, the call-down manual has this ridiculous language, assumptions and site call-down instructions. This section contains the basic instructions on how to conduct this drill using both a manual and automated call-down system. These assumptions and instructions are derived from specific CDC guidance and should result in the necessary output for data collection. For more details, please see, you know, the operationals for CDC stuff. Okay, they're talking about the CDC here. And on page 18, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the RAND Corporation have developed a data collection spreadsheet for scoring matrix and blah, blah, blah. So you can see this is all about CDC and health services because they stole this manual from the Massachusetts Health Services. This is obviously not a guide for an MCI or active shooter drill. It just doesn't have that language. It is a guide for phone calls from a health organization monitored by the CDC. Fraud proof number nine, the author created several versions. While the original hoaxer backstory claimed to have simply found the document and presented the document as he found it, that is obviously not true. The author prepared a video. In that video, which I downloaded at the time, on that day, inadvertently showed his many versions when he opened the document on the video. If you watch the video and pause it, you can clearly see he had numerous versions saved on his system. This one even has the A in parentheses, the original did not. His story he's telling that he just found a document and uploaded it as he found it is obviously false. It's a lie. We can see it right on his own computer he showed us. So that's his big oops. He got caught red-handed. Fraud proof number 10. 
There are many gems of stupidity proving that the manual is a fraud on the Department of Homeland Security's Health Department. There is no such department named that. They invented it. Go ahead and Google it. On page 14, exercise play will begin on December 13th with a TH at 13, 2012, no comma. Even a fifth grader would know that's not how you write dates. Certainly that's not how they would put it in a classified FEMA document. The hoaxer who wrote this was sounding it out, apparently, and that's how he wrote it. There are many oddities within the manual. However, these ten proofs prove that this manual is a complete fraud. Any hoaxer pushing this manual is real is actually committing fraud, especially if that hoaxer is using this to raise money for themselves. It's fraud. If you use this manual to trick people into thinking that you are providing a real FEMA manual so you should give donations, then you are committing fraud. Understand that. Legal fraud. And that's what many of the hoaxer leaders are doing. Okay, so I've put it out there. If any of you hoaxers want to refute any of these things, then let's hear it. Let's hear how this call-down manual is actually a site manual for an MCI active shooter drill. All right? That'll do it for this presentation. You can visit my website, sandyhookfacts.com. I'm C.W. Wade, and I'm out.